God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the senior pastor of the church. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you. We pray for your anointing. We pray that you bless. We pray that your word go forth. And Father God, in all its finality, that people come to accept your son, Jesus Christ, as their Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name as we pray and thank you. Amen. My beloved, today we will be doing part two of our message series titled, The Moral Decay of Society. Our main scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 37, which reads as follows from the King James Version, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The Good News Bible renders it, the coming of the Son of Man will be like what happened in the time of Noah. My beloved, one of the major signs of the end times that the Bible tells us to watch for is the moral decline of society. Jesus emphasized this sign in his Olivet Discourse when he said that he would return at a time when society becomes like it was in the days of Noah. So my beloved, know that the signs are upon us. We need to focus on the signs. We also need to evangelize the world for Jesus Christ. Today, we will move forward with America's rejection of God. My beloved, since 1973, nearly 60 million babies have been murdered, and they are crying out to God for vengeance. America consumes more than one half of all the illegal drugs produced in the world, yet we constitute only 5% of the world's population. So what does that tell you about the state of America at this present time? We spend about $2.8 million per year on internet pornography, which is more than half the worldwide total of 4.9 billion. Our rate of cohabitating partners has increased tenfold since 1960, totaling over 12 million unmarried partners. Our divorce rate is the highest of any nation in the world. Our number one drug problem is alcohol, producing over 17.6 million adults who are alcoholics or have problems with alcohol. Our nation has become a debt junkie, leading the world in both government debt and personal debt. Blasphemy of God's name, His Word, and His Son Jesus Christ has become commonplace in our media. If you listen to them, how much they cuss and take the Lord's name in vain. Just observe sometime. We are the moral polluter of the planet earth through the distribution of our immoral, violent, and blasphemous TV programs and movies. Lastly, we have forsaken the nation of Israel, demanding that they surrender their heartland and divide their capital city, which we should stay out of their business. They are sovereign. Jerusalem is the capital of God's place where he will return and set up his kingdom. The consequences of rebellion. We have become a nation that calls good evil and evil good. You can read that in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. And we are paying the price. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's from the King James Version. My beloved, judgment is coming soon upon America. Our schools have become arenas of deadly violence, killings, murders, shootings, places for drugs, students, young children on drugs. This should never be. Our prison population is increasing greatly from 500,000 in 1980 to over 2.5 million to this present time. Over 7.2 million of our people are under some form of correctional supervision. 
Over 1.5 million women are victims of domestic violence, rape, and other things. Our churches are caught up in an epidemic of apostasy as they set aside the Word of God in an effort to cozy up to the world and gain its approval. Woe to you churches that cater to the world and not take the gospel of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ to the lost and dying in this world, to the sinners, to the blasphemers. Woe to you. You will answer for that, not only in this present time, but on a day of judgment. We are experiencing one major natural disaster after another in unprecedented volume and ferocity. We have become afflicted with a plague of sexual perversion, producing an army of hardcore militant homosexuals. Know that. Unless they repent, their final abode will be in a lake of fire. In summary, we are a people who have been desensitized to sin. And in the process, we have forgotten how to be ashamed. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 15 reads, And they weren't ashamed, and they didn't blush, and they did disgusting things. No, they're not ashamed. They don't even know how to blush. So they will die with those who die. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. My beloved, punishment is coming. My beloved, there is going to be a cleansing. There is going to be a separation between the wheat and the tares. God is going to judge mankind. He's going to judge America, who he blessed for so many years. But America has become sleepy and has allowed rottenness to run our government, has allowed sinful people to be elected into the highest office of the land. God will not only punish people that vote these people in, but the punishment for those that hold these positions, who swore on the Bible to obey the Constitution, who swore on the Bible to honor God. They committed blasphemy. They turned against God. They mocked God. They will receive the worst type of punishment, which will be the hottest fires in hell, which I equate to the lake of fire. Persecution and alienation. Another negative characteristic of our society is that true Bible-believing Christians are being alienated from society and are being increasingly subjected to persecution at the speed at which this has happened in recent years. And it is breathtaking. Look at what took place during COVID. The first thing they shut down is churches. And they kept the bars open. Kept the houses of prostitution open. My beloved, this should not have ever happened. But the church allowed it to happen. But there are those churches that fought against it. And won. Many churches have never recovered have shut down, my beloved. We need to continue to pray, to evangelize, to take the word of God, to get out of the walls of the church and take the gospel. And also, we need to attend church. And when we attend church, we are to go and worship and praise the Lord, adore Him, seek Him, listen to the word of God being preached, take your Bibles to church, not your cell phones, not your tablets. Take your Bibles to church and open the Bible and test the Word of God that is being preached. Cultural Christianity. Many claim to be Christians, but the evidence of Christianity in the lives of most of them is almost nothing. They gamble, view R and X-rated movies, view trash shows on TV, these different dirty sitcoms. They purchase porn, idolized crude and vulgar musicians that speak about God being dead and going to hell and having a party. They visit abortion clinics and compile a divorce rate that equals non-Christians. This should not be. These type of so-called Christians are born in a Christian family, raised going to church, but without any personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Another characteristic of these culture Christians, is that they are rarely, if ever, reading the Bible. This has resulted in gross biblical ignorance 
and the undoing of doctrine. Our last subject for part two is evangelical Christianity. Ignorance of the word of God has become even more true of evangelical Christians. The very people whose identity in the past was linked to the reliance on the Bible for their ultimate authority in all things has fallen away. The word evangelical, which means to go and tell the good news, the gospel, has lost its meaning. We need to get back to the basics, my beloved. 101, evangelism. Taking the word of God to each person. Look at the people that we see every day in passing. Wear a cap that says Jesus. Wear a t-shirt. But if you do, wear a shirt or a cap that says Jesus or a scripture. Make sure your character matches it. My beloved, some of the problems we have is people go to church and they come out the same way and they don't manifest Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God, but they manifest the world. You watch some of them. To pull out of church, race out of church, run you off the road just to go to a restaurant to eat. That's their main thing. Instead of going home to a home-cooked meal, they patronize these ungodly places where they are laughed at and ridiculed. Some of these restaurants, fast food or whatever, they support abortion, homosexuality. They support all these different things. Don't patronize these places. Go home. Cook your food. Have a family dinner setting. Pray, and you'll have a lot more money to give to the kingdom of God because you're not giving it to the world and the dark kingdom of Satan. And that's where we are going to stop today. We will pick up next week, which will be part three, as I talk about Christian confusion. But I just want to say this today, my beloved. This isn't an easy message to preach. But God has called me to preach it. And I would like to say this also, that if you have never received Christ as your Savior and Lord, or if you're not sure whether you are saved, I want to lead you in a prayer of repentance. You must repent of your sins. Be sorry for your sins. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world that was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, and is soon to return. In judgment. You must believe this today. And if you would like to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord and make sure that when you leave this life you will go to heaven, please, won't you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father God, in Jesus' name I come before you a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He is the Savior of my soul. I believe that. He was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day. Ascended into heaven, is again sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today, I repent today, and I confess that Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. And I thank you for saving me as I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Amen. I beloved, if you truly repented today, just raise your hands and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. What I'd like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church when it preaches the Word of God from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, omitting nothing. Get an audience with the pastor or one of the staff elders. Tell them what happened. Ask them to pray with you, to pray for you, to unwash you with oil, and to baptize you and water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask them to give you a Bible if you haven't one, and ask them to mentor you. Then... What I would like you to do, as soon as you can, email me at abundant.grace at att.net and tell me about your salvation. You can also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or our other website, www.abundantgraceofmelothian.com. You can follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Or if you live in this area, you can listen to us on our radio stations. We have preaching 24-7 on FM 95.5 and AM 1650. We have an all-praise and worship service that continually runs 24-7 
on our sister station, 92.9 FM. Please, let me hear from you. Or Google us, Abundant Grace Church of Melothian, or my name, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Thank you for being with us today. This has been part two of our message series titled, The Moral Decay of Society. Please, watch this video over and over and over again. Leave a comment. God bless you, my beloved. And don't forget to tune in next week where we will continue with part three of the moral decay of society. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.